it's time for Jack to let her rip! Hey people, how's the day going man? It's your boy JK. Now I've seen the, the comments, the little requests from a few people here and there. Are you guys interested in me doing like a lore series about what might potentially happen in Mortal Kombat 11? I won't do it related to any and every character. I'll only do it to characters that will probably be relevant in MK11 story and leave it at that. Like Liu Kang, Shao Kahn, I've seen someone request Smoke and the person's name is Smoke, shout out to Smoke and stuff like that. So let me know and if you are interested in me doing that, expect the first episode next week. So hopping into today's top 10 countdown, we'll be looking at a topic that has interested me personally for quite a while and I want to sit down and really like put it in ink. Who are the top 10 most powerful ninjas in Mortal Kombat's lore? in its history in the entire universe and today I've made that list and I'm gonna share it with you guys if you disagree with any number let me know in the comments below let me hear your top 10 and I'll probably you know have a back and forth with you to claim why my top 10 is the superior one haha <laughs> so coming at number 10 let's hop straight in is reptile and Takeda their abilities seem to cancel each other's out one can go invisible and one can sense everything around him. One can naturally move fast, one can teleport. But as the kid grows, he'll clearly become the stronger one. But for now, lack of experience holds him back. At 9, I've got Katana. Question, is Katana a ninja bruv? Answer, fuck yes. She's an assassin, that's what a ninja is. Her skill should not be doubted. Shao Kahn of all people had her by his side, not just to look pretty, although she does, but to defend him. If he deemed her worthy enough to fulfill such a task, then I would not doubt his judgment on her abilities, no I would not. At 8 o'clock and heading into prime time is Kenshi. Like father like son, the Takahashi look like they belong in a goddamn anime or something man, just look at them. They look like they deserve to be lead characters. Anyway, the upper limits of Kenshi's power has never been explored but like I said way back in another video I did a couple months ago, both Shinnok and Raiden, gods, have shown keen interest in Sento. That alone speaks volumes. Let's keep it going man, at 7 is Triborg slash New Saiba. <clears throat> Having the mind of three different warriors or being a specter from hell. I'm not quite sure what's more potent for combat, so I ranked them equally. Go figure. Not much to be said, you both can, you know, estimate how powerful they both are. At 6, and hot on the list is Enenra Smoke. We should be seeing more of him in MK11, but just the foundation of his abilities makes him hard to kill. Like Steven Seagal in his prime. Chuckle chuckle. I'm guessing this form of smoke functions like Scorpion spirit that dwells within him, Hanzo spirit scorpion, which is pretty cool and I wonder what other spirits lurk within the MK universe that can be utilized for story purposes. The possibilities are quite endless. At 5 I've got Ermac. Though he looks nothing like a ninja now, it's what he originally was. Simply having the souls and potentially the knowledge of thousands of warriors. I'm surprised Ermac isn't on some god level shit in the games, but hey, they can't make everyone overpowered, huh? Coming in at 4, I've got rain for you guys, the fresh prince of nowhere. <laughs> in MKX's story mode, he seemed pretty hard to kill and to beat above all characters just making a cameo, but it's the scale of his attack showcased in the comics that ranks him high for me capable of blotting out the entire sky or at least a very large portion of it, having weather control on that level makes him pretty much a demigod in every sense of the word. Ooh we at number 3 we've got Tremor, the black dragon's hook basically. In the outward war with the Shokans, homeboy just came through with zero fucks to give and did some demigod level shit just like Rain with his earth manipulation. 
so I genuinely can't wait to see how they utilize him in Mortal Kombat 11 story mode. And, well, he better be in it, because I hope they don't, you know, go to that place like they went with MK9 and MKX where he doesn't appear in Mortal Kombat 11 because he was already playable in MKX, man, that's just bullshit. So, we're almost there, stay with me. At number 2 is Netherrealm Scorpion. Now let me put it into perspective. Quan Chi is a nigga who is not afraid to confront Fujin and Raiden directly in combat at the same time. But after being trapped in a nether realm with Hanzo from Mortal Kombat 4 to Deadly Alliance, fuck that shit, he was on the run and running and running. He had no interest in combating Scorpion. It is said that the longer Scorpion stays, the stronger he becomes in the nether realm. But how strong is yet to be seen. However, we have seen someone else got a lot stronger than Scorpion has ever been seen to be. And that is our number one pick, ladies and gentlemen. It is Kamidogu Cursed Sub Zero. Under one of the artifacts' influence, Sub Zero displays power that would give even Raiden a run for his money in combat, man. He shut down a major metropolitan city and had it completely on ice. It is honestly one of the greatest showcases of power in MK Stories history. Not much to be said. The images from the comics speak for themselves. That blood magic, simply put, is to not be fucked with. Because um, the story says that the Kamidogus kind of have some of the blood. I don't know if they're being um, metaphoric about it, because I'm not sure if the one being was a physical entity, but the Kamidogus has the blood of the one being, the most powerful entity, the entity of the MK universe. So there we go man, the top 10 most powerful ninjas in MK Lore's history. Ha, huh. it's good to finally get us off my chest. And now, the only thing left is for you guys to state your opinions. Do you agree with me? I expect most of you guys to agree with me, but if you disagree, let me know and let me know why. I've been wanting to have this discussion with someone else for quite a while, but you know, I've got to keep these opinions to myself. Because most of my friends are not really hardcore Mortal Kombat fans and that's about it. Anyway, time to end the video. This has been your boy JK. Much more top 10s to come. And remember to tell me if you're interested in me making a lore series for MK11. Is it too early? Let me know. Peace out, man. Peace out.